Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about six, six nutrient deficiencies that thyroid patients suffer from. Sorry, I couldn't do the six because I have a pen in my hand. But anyway, we're going to be talking about those nutrient deficiencies that thyroid patients suffer from. And this is based off my experience and it's also based off of the physiology of how the thyroid impacts certain nutrients and their absorption and their utilization in your body. So if you have thyroid disease, and I mean by thyroid disease, I mean hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's if your thyroid's been removed or if you've had radioactive iodine, this all applies to you. It does not apply to hyperthyroidism though. That's a separate topic. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating patients with thyroid disease, helping people uh, with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. So let's get into our topic today, which is common nutrient deficiencies that thyroid patients suffer from. And really what we're after here, the reason we care about this is because these are treatable things. Okay, so most thyroid patients are probably not even thinking about the sort of supplements and the nutrients that they need, but these things are really, really, really important for thyroid function, for other function, uh, other uh, important processes in the body. So if these levels are low and they're not replaced, you're gonna just feel worse. And that this includes, by the way, even if you are taking thyroid medication. So taking thyroid medication is not going to solve these problems. And in my opinion, this is one of the reasons that thyroid patients who take thyroid medications, they still feel poorly afterwards because they're not treating these underlying issues. So let's talk about these things. So again, I have six here, and we're gonna go into a little bit of detail on each one of these and explain why they're so important. So the first one um, is vitamin B12. Okay, so specifically vitamin B12. Yes, thyroid patients also get other B vitamin deficiencies, but we're not, again, this is just, we're focused on these six here. So if your favorite nutrient isn't listed on this list, isn't on here, it doesn't mean it is important. I'm just talking about the ones I see most commonly. Okay, so this is based off of lab testing and a lot of uh, treating thyroid patients and et cetera. So, okay, so vitamin B12 is the first one. Now, this one is really important because vitamin B12 is kind of a, I'm gonna call it a wimpy vitamin. It's not a wimpy vitamin itself, but it's just, it, it, if anything goes wrong, your body's not going to be able to absorb it or utilize it. And what I mean by that is it, it has to have certain conditions in the gut in order to be absorbed. And then once it's in the body, like for instance, if you have MTHFR defects or any genetic mutations that influence how it's, uh, how it's utilized, um, it's not going to work properly. So you have to take it in the right formulation. So not only is it hard for your body, for, hard to get into your body if the, if the uh, setting in the environment isn't perfect, it's also hard sometimes for your body to use it. And so vitamin B12 is, is right up there in terms of importance. Another like confusing aspect of this is, is that serum vitamin B12 levels, which is what most people think about when they test the B12 or test vitamin B12, they're simply inaccurate. So there's tons of people walking around, and you may be one of them, who has a normal, quote unquote, normal B12 level, like let's say in the six or 700s, but is truly vitamin B12 deficient. And again, it has to do with all those other issues that I talked about before. But vitamin B12 is probably one of my um, most important ones here. So if you have a thyroid condition, there is a good chance, even if you have a normal serum B12 level, that you are still vitamin B12 deficient and still would benefit from taking B12. And I know this firsthand because I've treated so many patients, so many thyroid patients, and I give them almost every single one of them in the beginning, unless they're already taking a lot of B12. But I'll give them vitamin B12 and they'll, they'll notice almost an instantaneous increase in energy just from taking that B12. Now, again, there's other aspects of this. We'll have to do a video on just B12 itself, but you know, if you're having issues with absorption, you might benefit from taking a shot. Um, you might benefit from sub, uh, sublingual um, uh, uh, B12 versus oral encapsulations. So there's other aspects of it, but B12 is very, very important. And if that B12 is low, you're gonna have low energy. You might have worsening brain fog, etc. So very, very important B12 if you have any sort of thyroid problem, simple desire. So that's number one. Number two is vitamin D. Okay, so vitamin D, you know, it could be considered a hormone as well, but we call it vitamin D just for classification purposes. So if you hear people refer to it as hormone D, don't be too surprised. But the point here is that vitamin D or hormone D, whatever you want to call it, it's very important to a number of a number of important processes in the body. And I would include here probably perhaps the most important is your immune system. So low levels of vitamin D increase your risk of developing autoimmune diseases. They also directly impact your thyroid, by the way. So they actually decrease thyroid function, increase your risk of thyroid cancer, increase your risk of developing Hashimoto's, et cetera. So you do not want to have low vitamin D levels if you are a thyroid patient. Not only could that low vitamin D potentially trigger your thyroid problem, it's going to exacerbate it if it's already present. And again, vitamin B12, when we're talking about is, 
uh, probably in the same category as vitamin D in terms of the sheer number of people who are vitamin D deficient. We just don't get out in the sun as often. And even if we do, we're wearing sunscreen, which blocks the UV rays so that they can't activate the vitamin D. So there's a lot of issues and a lot of reasons why people are vitamin D deficient. But I will hardly ever find people, if you just sample, and I know most doctors and most practitioners, if you're listening to this, you, you would agree probably. But so many people, if I just randomly tested 100 people out on the street for vitamin D, I'm sure 95%, and that's probably not an exaggeration, 90 to 95% would be vitamin D deficient. But this number gets even more important and probably perhaps a little bit higher in the population of those people who have thyroid problems. So if you do, take vitamin D if you need to, preferably D3, by the way, you want to take vitamin D3. You do not want to take D2. D2 is a no. You want to take D3 to bring that level back up, especially if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it'll help the body work a lot smoother and may actually reduce that inflammation and autoimmunity that you get from the autoimmune disease. Okay, so number three here, uh, it's actually a twofer, so we're kind of combining things together, but we have zinc and we have selenium. And I really like to combine them together because these things are really powerhouses for your thyroid. So they both function in one, well, they, they have several different functions, but the reason that we really care about them is their impact on T4 to T3 conversion. So they actually help your body activate thyroid hormone. And much like B12 and D, a lot of people are deficient in both of these. Now I would say primarily zinc. Zinc is probably, people are probably more deficient in zinc than they are in selenium, but it's really, it's not, it's, it's easy to become deficient in selenium as well. And if you have one, you're more likely to have another. Or maybe let's say if you're really zinc deficient, you might be moderately selenium deficiency or selenium deficient. So I'd say if you have one, you definitely want to supplement with the other just to bring those levels back up. So again, the reason we care is because they help your body activate thyroid hormone. So even if you're taking thyroid medication, this still matters. Even if your body's producing some thyroid hormone, let's say you have Hashimoto's and it's not really you know chugging out as much thyroid hormone as you want, it doesn't, it will still help whatever your body's capable of producing to activate it because just taking the thyroid medication by mouth, unless it's T3, which most of you are probably not on, but unless it's T3, um, it's not active. Okay. So level thyroxine and synthroid must be activated through this process. So there's a lot of people who are, who are taking thyroid medication or are producing thyroid medication, but not activating it. And one of the main reasons would be because they are deficient in these certain nutrients, which help that conversion process. Another benefit of these would be that they help your immune system function. So zinc, selenium, vitamin D, all really important for um, immune system function and low levels of these nutrients may be part of the reason why certain people develop autoimmune diseases more frequently than others. Okay. So keep that in mind. Number four is iodine. This is a really confusing thing for a lot of people, really confusing topic. So many people out there, especially thyroid patients, if they know that they have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's are basically trying to avoid Hashim or not Hashimoto's, trying to avoid iodine at all costs. I, I'm sure that there have been places out there, I don't know where they're reading this, but people are basically anti-iodine because they believe that it's going to negatively impact the thyroid. Now, there are some studies that may indicate that that is true, but only under very interesting and select circumstances. Your body, but let me just set the record straight here. Your body needs iodine, okay? It's not optional, it's absolutely necessary. And if you don't believe me, just go look on the back of a product like, like salt that doesn't have iodine in it. It will say, it will have a warning that basically says something like this salt or whatever, this product does not contain iodine, which is an essential nutrient and that's pretty much it, but it is essential nutrient for the body. The word essential is key there. Okay. You need iodine. It is absolutely essential and critical for the body. Now, how you take iodine matters, right? The dose, you know, um, what you're taking it with, are you taking it with other nutrients and things like that? You don't want to take too much. And if you take too little, it doesn't do anything, but iodine is still really important. It, it forms the backbone of thyroid hormone. No iodine means no thyroid hormone. And many people, because of whatever, whatever they've read or whatever they've heard are avoiding it completely. And they're causing worsening thyroid function because their body can't create the backbone of the thyroid hormone to pump it out into the body. Okay, so you have to pay attention to iodine. You should be taking at least the minimum dose. Now, some people, you know, and I'll recommend even higher doses. You don't have to go mega dosing. Mega dosing is dangerous and I, I don't recommend that. But, you know, small uh, to medium to high dosing, that's okay. And a lot of patients really benefit from that. Okay, so that's, that's iodine. Uh, and again, I have videos on pretty much all of these, I think, individually, um, but especially iodine, several videos on just this topic because of how much confusion exists out there. So watch those videos if you're one of those who thinks that it's dangerous. I'll, I'll walk you through the studies. I'll explain to you why, why that really isn't the case. Next one is magnesium. Magnesium is another one of those nutrients which is involved in 300 plus, you know, uh, cellular um, uh, processes and things like this. So it's, it's hard to really say, what do you feel like when your magnesium level is low? Because it impacts so many different systems. It's kind of like with your thyroid. 
It's like you can't say people who have low thyroid, you know, have only fatigue. Like, well, yes, they have low energy and they have fatigue, but they also have weight gain. They also have hair loss. They have all of these seemingly, un, you know, disconnected symptoms. And that's because thyroid hormone impacts them all. Magnesium is similar. In fact, a lot of these are similar in that way, but magnesium more so because it impacts like, you know, 300 plus systems. But what you need to know is that if you have a thyroid condition that alters how your body burns through or utilizes or metabolizes magnesium such that conditions such as hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism will either make you go through it quicker or, or less, you know, not as quick. So usually what happens for hypothyroid patients though is that they are deficient. They have low levels of magnesium. And if you have those low levels, first of all, you need to replace it, obviously. Um, but second of all, it's going to make you just sort of have a general blah feeling, right? Like even if you're taking thyroid medication, you might, instead of, you, you know, you'll feel a little better, but you're not getting to your normal self. You'll feel a little sluggish. You'll feel a little run down. You're not going to be thinking quite as quickly or as on your feet or as quick on your feet as you would normally. And this all stems potentially from magnesium and magnesium, much like B12 is really inaccurate if you're trying to test it in the blood. So I, patients will always say, well, I, I tested my B12 and I tested, well, D will always come back as low because that one's actually fairly accurate. But I tested my B12, I tested my magnesium and they came back as normal. So I don't need any supplements. That is the wrong way to look at it, the wrong way to think about it. And if you do that, um, I can almost guarantee you're just not going to feel better. And, and the reason is because the lab tests are not accurate. You cannot trust lab tests that are not accurate because they can't go in and test what's in your cell. What they do is they test your bloodstream and they say, hey, is there enough of the nutrient in the blood, but even if there is, it doesn't guarantee that it's getting to where it needs to be or that it's activating or it's getting inside the cell or it's getting inside the machinery, which it needs to. And we can't test that. The only way we can test that is by biopsying and looking inside the cell, which is not really possible, feasible, or you know, economical at any point in the future here. So magnesium, it's probably a good idea just to, just to take. Um, I'd be one of those people that might recommend just take some magnesium, take it for a month or two. You'll probably feel better in the process and it's not going to hurt you um, if you do that. That's number five. Number six is iron. Okay. So the reason we care about iron is, well, several fold, but I would say perhaps the most important reason is that if you have low iron, it will negatively impact your thyroid. So in other words, your thyroid needs iron to function properly, but here's the twist, low thyroid function. So when your thyroid goes low, it causes you to not absorb iron, which causes you to become iron deficient. So you kind of have this circle where low thyroid, let's call it LT causes low iron, which causes further low thyroid, which causes further low iron. Oh, make sure you guys can see that. So you kind of have this vicious cycle just going round and round and round. You have to stop it. Okay. You can stop it by taking the right thyroid medication, getting the right, you know, increasing your thyroid naturally, if that's what you prefer. Taking some of these supplements will help obviously, um, but you really have to at least address the iron if you're there. Now you do need to check your iron studies for this and you can do that. And these are accurate in this case. So, so do do that. And you don't want to take iron unless you know that. And you want to check uh, ferritin, and then of course, serum iron um, and TI, let's make sure I can write that, TIBC. So there are several, several uh, well, I guess you also want percent set, so we'll just be complete here. But there are several tests that you wanna look at if you suspect that you have iron deficiency, but don't just take iron unless you know that you do. So these are, let's say what, six things, six nutrients that I see that thyroid patients are commonly deficient in. And these things, if they're not addressed, can keep your thyroid function low, even if you are taking thyroid medication. So remember this, they're very, very important. Yes, there are more, I'll probably have to do a part two, but I would say these are probably the most common. So if you know that you have any of these nutrient deficiencies, leave your comments below, I wanna know, because um, it helps me, it's just more data, it's more information. It also helps other people who are listening to this. Because a lot of people, strangely enough, believe they're sort of on their own. Um, and I think that's just part of, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. But um, if you can share your thoughts and opinions, it really goes a long way to help other patients, I think. If you haven't already, by the way, make sure that you download my free thyroid resources. I have eight downloadable resources that you can get at the link below. It'll be in the comment section or in the description. So make sure you do that if you're a thyroid patient, because I have a lot of information, which is really helpful to that. So that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I'll see you, one, see you guys in the next one.